Hey everybody, it's Mike here from the We Rent Shop and welcome. Today's instructional video will describe how to make repairs to automotive wiring harnesses the correct way. The methods I'm going to show were taught to me during my stint as a Master Guild Audi dealership technician, so you can bet they're not only robust but also slightly over-engineered. Prior to my entry into the dealership world, I was an MECP certified mobile electronics installer. So automotive electronics is how I got my actual start working on cars in a professional setting. All we did all day long was wiring. So I'm gonna show you some of those techniques as well and how they compare to the procedure mandated by the OEMs. The original equipment manufacturers put a lot of thought into their wiring harnesses and for good reason. During my time as an Audi tech, the wiring harnesses were actually the most expensive part of the entire vehicle, far eclipsing the powertrain components and costs due to their complexity and design. So when it came to wiring faults and failures, they had a very specific procedure they wanted you to follow, and that's what I'm about to share with you, because in all my experience, it's by far and away the best way to make a wiring repair on a vehicle. When we think of a precision wiring repair in any setting, there are basically only two ways of doing it, crimping and soldering. Now to the layperson, soldering seems like it's superior because you are heating up the wire and adding a binding material to it in the form of lead solder. However, in an automotive setting, this method of repairing and joining wires is not recommended by any OEM for two main reasons. One, there are too many variables involved with getting a correct solder joint. When you see me solder here, notice I'm heating the wire and not the solder. The proper way to do this is to heat the conductor to the point where the solder flows into the joint away from the actual heat source. That's how you know you're getting the proper temperature and you won't get a cold solder joint, which will absolutely fail in an environment with a lot of vibration and moisture, such as a car. In the automotive environment, a crimp is a far superior way to join wires because it actually forms a cold weld between the connector and the conductor. There's a reason why high tension 500,000 volt electrical cables, as well as the cables coming into your house are crimped rather than soldered. Now, there's an entire branch of science dedicated to proper crimping techniques, but in a nutshell, you have to prep the wire properly and reduce the cross section of the connector a certain amount for the crimp to perform well. If you compromise any of these steps, the performance of the connection in terms of resistance and current carrying capacity will rapidly diminish. Now in the automotive aftermarket, we always used crimp connectors such as this butt connector and this crimp cap. And the tool most commonly used are these crimpers shown here. Now, there are issues with joining a wire in this fashion. First, when you complete this crimp, the conductors are exposed to the elements, as you can see, and that's an engraved invitation for corrosion over time. Second, once again, we don't have any method of relieving the strain on the connector at each side. So at this point, we know a crimp is the way to go, but we have to address corrosion and connector strain. So here's the solution. This is the technique that was taught to me by Audi and is by far and away the most superior way of joining a wire. But first, let's go into how to properly prepare a wire for a crimp. So the first step towards making a proper crimp is stripping the wire. Now, two things to remember here. You need to strip away the correct amount of insulation. If you take off too much, the conductor will be exposed too far outside the connector and you risk a short. The second thing is that you need to use the proper tool to do the stripping. Any type of diagonal cutter is not recommended because these tools have a tendency of cutting into the strands. And this reduces the current carrying capacity of the wire. The proper tool to use are pliers that are made for stripping specific gauges of wire. And you can see the markings on these and if you insert the correct gauge wire into the correct hole on the tool, the cutting opening is sized properly and you won't cut into any of the strands. Now once you have the wire where it needs to be, we are going to use these style crimp connectors. Now notice the difference between these and the ones I used before. I'll show you why they are longer at the ends in a moment. The other key component to this superior crimp is the crimper itself. This is a ratcheting style crimper from Klein Tools, and the beauty of this thing 
is that it applies a very specific force to the crimp connector time and time again. With these other style crimpers, you can go too light or too heavy, but this one produces the same consistent results, resulting in a much more robust connection. Second, this crimper has three specific dies to use, depending on the connector, and they are color-coded, so you match the die with the connector, yellow being the largest for 10 to 12 gauge wire, and red being the smallest for 16 to 22 gauge. With the wire prepped, we will insert it into the crimp connector, and we will squeeze down on this bad boy on both sides. And there we have it. So we've made a proper crimp with the proper tool. What about corrosion and connector tension? Well, here's the best part. When you introduce some heat into these wings on the connector, not only do they shrink down, but they release a hot melt adhesive that seals the connection and transfers the tension onto the wire and away from the connection. What you should not do is use a lighter to shrink down these connectors because an open flame could melt or ignite something unintended. What I use is my butane powered soldering iron with the hot air attachment, which is much more controlled and safe. And the result is the strongest, safest, most robust crimp connection with enough longevity to outlast the vehicle itself. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I'm so grateful for all the incredible comments I've received across all my social media channels. If you like what you see here, we also do a lot of short form video content. Follow us on Facebook at WeWrench Official, Instagram at WeWrench Official, TikTok at WeWrench. If you found this video to be informative or entertaining, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment. I will see you guys next time.